friends welcome back to my channel true crime and felines my name is brandy and every friday i bring you a true crime case or mystery with a one or more of my 14 felines what would you do if you bought a house and right after you closed on it a body was found that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this week's case so let's get started Raina Angelica Marroquin was born in 1941 in El Salvador. Now, she would get married at a young age, but the marriage did not last due to her husband's infidelity. In 1966, at the age of 25, Raina would leave for the United States and to chase the American dream. She told her mother before she left that she was going to be a somebody someday. Once she got to the US, Raina went right to work. She took English classes so she would speak it more clearly and she also took job training classes as well. Raina would end up getting a job at a factory where they made plastic flowers. She also worked part-time as a nanny. Reina would write several letters back to her family in El Salvador explaining her adventures in America. Unfortunately, those letters stopped in 1969. Her family became concerned and reported her missing, but there were no leads or information that they could go on. Reina just vanished, so it eventually just became a cold case. So for the next 30 years, all her family could do is mourn her and wonder what happened. Now, cut to 1999, uh, a man had just purchased a house in Jericho, New York at 67 Forest Drive. The house was a split level with a garage underneath and a crawl space for storage. There was some items still in the crawl space. There was a 55 gallon drum. The buyer of the house asked the seller, whose name was Richard Cohen, to please have all those items removed, including the drum. Ronald Cohen would explain that that drum had been there for as long as he owned the house, and for all he knew, it just had some old oil in it. But all the same, the seller asked that it be removed. So Ronald Cohen went to move the drum and it was heavy. It actually weighed 350 pounds. So he got some friends together and they inched and rolled the side of the barrel to the side of the road and left it for the sanitation department to come pick up. Now, unfortunately, when the sanitation department came to pick it up, they stated that their two guys could not lift it, and so he must empty out the barrel of whatever was inside, and then they would come back and take it. So Ronald made arrangements to find how to dispose of oil appropriately, because that's what he believed was in the drum. So he pried the lid open, all ready to drain it of its contents, when a horrible smell wafted out of it. When he composed himself, he looked in the drum and he saw a high heel shoe and a hand. Ronald immediately called the police. Authorities took the drum and transported it to the coroner's office for forensic examination. Once there, they emptied the drum and they found inside a mummified body of a young woman. She was dressed in 60s attire clothing. Now, because she wasn't skeletal and she still had her skin on mummified condition, they determined that her cause of death was blood force trauma to the back of her head. There were many blows to the back of her head. Once they got her out of the barrel, they determined that she was pregnant as they found the remains of a eight or nine month old fetus as well. So she was pregnant when she was killed. There were other items in the barrel as well, including an address book, two rings, a locket, a stem of a plastic flower, and lots of polystyrene pellets, and that is what made the barrel so heavy. The authorities inspected the address book, and 
over the years it was much decayed, but they were able to make out a permanent residence card on the cover of the book belonging to a Reina Angelica Marroquin. Using infrared light on the pages, they were able to read a couple of phone numbers from the book. Of those numbers, one belonged to a Howard Elkins and the other belonged to a Kathy Andrade. Now on the last page of the address book, it was assumed that Raina wrote this, but somebody had written, don't be mad, I told the truth. So police contacted the Kathy Andrade in the book, and luckily over these 30 years, she still had the same number, since so she was willing to talk to the authorities. Kathy told investigators that she was very good friends with Raina, and one day she just up and disappeared and she had no idea what happened to her. She said the two had met when they both were staying in a shelter in New York. Kathy went on to explain that Raina became pregnant while staying at that shelter and then suddenly was able to move out of the shelter into an apartment. Raina had told Kathy that the father of her baby was the one putting her up in the apartment. Kathy stated that Raina never told her exactly who the father was because he was married. However, Kathy stated that Raina fully expected this guy to leave his wife and marry Raina. Well, as time passed and Raina was nearing the end of her pregnancy, apparently the father of the baby was not moving fast enough in Raina's mind. So Kathy stated that Raina was also racked with guilt because of her own experience of her husband cheating on her. So she decided to give this guy's wife a call and tell her everything. And apparently that's exactly what she did. Kathy said that the night she disappeared, she had called, Raina had called Kathy in a complete panic, saying that I called his wife, I told him everything, he is so mad, he is going to kill me. Kathy figured Raina was just overreacting because of kind of the quarrel that this caused. However, Raina was very upset, so Kathy decided to go over to apartment and sit with her to calm her down. However, when Kathy got to the apartment, Raina was already gone. She stated there was some food on the stove that was still warm, her keys, her winter coat was still there. So Kathy just sat down and waited for hours, but Raina never did return that night. Kathy ended up going home and waiting and kept calling Raina and Raina would never answer. So Kathy said she did go to the police. But since Kathy was not a family member, apparently the police would not take her missing persons report. So now investigators kind of had somewhere to go, but they went two routes. The first route they went is determining where the barrel came from and when it showed up at the house. And the other route was trying to find out who the father of this baby was. As for the barrel, they were able to pull off a serial number and track its history. Uh, the barrel was made in 1963 and it was used for transporting dye to, you guessed it, the plastic flower factory where Raina worked. So this was the first clue to investigators of where that plastic stem came from. Next, they started questioning all of the owners of the house about the drum and trying to figure out when it showed up at the house. All the owners stated that that drum had been there throughout the entire time that they owned the house. Because it was too heavy to move, nobody messed with it. So that meant out of process of elimination, the barrel had been there since the very first owner of the house. The house itself was built in 1957, commissioned by a married couple who had lived there since it was built until 1973. That person's name was Howard Elkins, the same person in Raina's address book. 
So authorities went on their way to track down Howard Elkins. After he sold his house in 1973, him and his wife moved down to Florida. So authorities flew down to Florida to question good old Howard. As authorities talked to them, Howard was cooperative at first. He stated that Yes, he did have an affair while he owned the factory with an employee there, but he just couldn't recall her name or her physical appearance. Authorities were able to get a picture of Raina from her immigration passport, and when they showed that picture to Howard, he denied knowing anything about her or anything about her disappearance. He also denied knowing why his name would be in her address book besides the fact that he owned the company where she worked. When authorities asked Howard about the barrel in the crawl space, he became agitated but then stated he had no idea what they were talking about. What barrel? Detectives stated that they started asking Howard questions that they already knew the answer to, to see how his response was. And unfortunately, Howard began lying. Finally, the detectives broke it down and stated, can we have a DNA sample from you to see if you're the father of Raina's baby? Howard outright refused and then the phone rang. Howard answered the phone became agitated and told the detectives that they needed to leave as his wife was on her way home and he needed to talk to her about some serious things and he'd rather do it alone and without them there. Detectives agreed to leave, but on their way out, they did tell Howard they will return with a warrant for his DNA. The next day, as the authorities were trying to secure the warrant to get Howard's DNA, they received a phone call that Howard's wife, Ruth, had reported him missing. Howard's wife stated that her husband had left shortly after she got home that day and he never returned. So now they were on the hunt for Howard. The authorities thought he had skipped town. However, it wouldn't take long for Howard's son to find him and unfortunately, Howard had taken his life. Less than 24 hours after Howard talked to the authorities, he went to Walmart, purchased a gun, climbed in the back seat of his car, and shot himself. There was no suicide note found at the scene. Detectives figured that they pretty much had their man at this point and that Howard had very few choices on what to do about it. Howard was 71 years old at this point, and he was potentially looking at spending the rest of his life in jail for something he did 30 years ago. So he could either face up to his crime or take the easy way out, which he chose. During Howard's autopsy, they did take his DNA, compared it to the fetus, and determined that Howard was, in fact, the father of Raina's unborn baby. So authorities now could just speculate how the murder took place. By using evidence and talking to others, they figured that they knew Howard and Raina were having an affair, obviously. Raina becomes pregnant and starts making demands of Howard. So Howard puts Rena up in an apartment and starts paying most of her expenses to keep her quiet. Rena becomes frustrated or racked with guilt, depending on whose story you believe, and decides to call Howard's wife and tell her everything. Howard becomes enraged now that his wife knows that he was having an affair and he has to get rid of the problem. They speculated that Howard went to Rena's apartment in March or April of 1969 and drug her out of there. He then takes her to the factory where he hits her over the head and kills her. He then puts her in a barrel and then puts that barrel in the back of his car and transports her to his house. They were thinking that the initial plan, that or Howard's initial plan 
was that he was going to fill the barrel with those polystyrene pellets that were heavy to weigh it down and then he was going to put her put the barrel on his boat and go dump it in the ocean where it will sink and nobody will ever know however howard probably miscalculated the heaviness of how many pellets he was putting in there and when the barrel became about 350 pounds he realized he couldn't lift it himself so he wasn't about to call a friend to help him dump a barrel in the sea so he inched it back in his crawl space and there it stayed for 30 years now there would be reports in newspapers that a woman fitting reina's description would show up at the factory with a toddler and employees would joke that the, the kid was Howard's kid. I mean, Raina worked at the factory since 1967, so it's possible if the affair started right away that she could have given birth and gotten pregnant again. However, it was never determined that that woman was Raina, and it was probably highly unlikely due to two reasons, really. There were no records of Raina ever giving birth, first of all, in the United States, and secondly, her friend Kathy never stated that Raina had a child hanging around at any point, only that she had become pregnant. So was Howard using his factory as a dating service? Maybe he had knocked up another employee. It's also possible as well, since Raina did part-time nanny, that she could have brought in a child that she was watching and joking around that it was Howard's but again, we will never know if that was Raina or not. Raina's body was returned to her family in El Salvador, where she could be put to rest properly. Raina's mother, who was 95 years old at the time that Raina was found, stated that she had always had dreams that her daughter was trapped in a small space for over 30 years. Many family members believed that Raina's mother stayed alive just so she could know what happened to her daughter. Only one month later, Raina's mother passed away and they buried her next to her daughter in El Salvador. You know, on the uh, Oxygen channel, there is a series called Buried in the Backyard. And this case is one of the episodes. It's called Lady in a Barrel. I will link to the description down below if you'd like to check it out. It is very interesting. So what are your thoughts on this case? Does Howard have more children out there because he was having an affair with all these ladies? And if so, why was Raina killed and not anybody else? Was it because Raina told his wife of his extracurricular activities? I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. Please don't forget to subscribe and we will be back next week with a true crime case or mystery. Thanks guys.